an orientation to how to use a mini skid with the branch manager grapple in a tree job scenario. The first thing that we'll talk about with a mini skid is safety. Um, we've got helmets and you really should have eye pro, all right? Because if there's a hydraulic rupture, it can spray out hydraulic fluid so fast it can cut your skin or blind you. I mean, that's not likely to happen, but, but it could happen. The other thing about the mini skid is tip overs. Tip over is a real serious uh, possibility when the terrain especially is, is uneven and you're working in like a woodsy area or driving over logs or sudden drop offs. In this environment, we don't have that risk because this is a training environment, but we're still gonna practice the right way and the way that you pr prevent or mitigate against the risk of tip overs is keep your boom lower. So a couple of things we gotta just, orientation to the mini skid. This is the boom. Okay, it's on the other side as well. This is a hinge point right here. This whole thing lifts up and down. That is controlled with this stick, either down to lower the boom or pulling it back to raise the boom, uh, for, for the ditch witch at least. And then it has another hinge point right here at the front. That's where we call the attachment. The attachment can either tilt forward or it can tilt backward. Again, with the green stick, except instead of up and down, it's right or left, okay? so. Tilting right pushes the attachment forward for the ditch switch. Tilting left, uh, moving the stick to the left tilts the attachment backwards. One thing you'll notice is if the attachment is tilted forward, the boom cannot go down as far. So when we're, you know, traveling, for example, and we're on uneven terrain, we're worried about a tip over, then we need to tilt that attachment back and then lower the boom all the way. Okay, we want it to hover with the, the dogs of this grapple, just, you know, a few inches above the ground. That's a, that's a good practice to be in. Try to keep these bumper spikes just a few inches above the ground, okay? Especially when you're moving around. There are exceptions to this when you're having to maneuver, you know, in a client's yard or raise logs into the back of a truck or whatever. There's always exceptions. But uh, when you're traveling, generally, keep that boom low and you can't, you can't lower the boom if the grapple or the attachment is tilted forward. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the branch manager grapple. This thing is awesome. Let me, let me go ahead and first turn this on and face this towards the camera. not sponsored by branch manager although I should be because I'm about to give a really amazing sales pitch for this thing this is I think the most incredible attachment for a mini skid that was designed by tree guys for tree guys this is the most useful grapple I think on the market it is way better than a pair of forks a pair of like you know the chomper grapples like that they could pick up that log and it would be stuck in the horizontal position right and then if you try to negotiate that through a tight corner or, or we're about to do this obstacle course weaving through these cones, you wouldn't be able to do it. Well, this grapple oscillates, okay? So first of all, if I raise this thing, if I lift these jaws open, it'll open to about five feet, okay? It opens to about five feet. So it, you can put lay that down on a nice big brush pile and just clamp down a huge brush pile with these, with these jaws. It's got plenty of opening. It can pick up a really heavy log. This grapple could pick up more than the skid is able to pick up. This is an SK800. So it can pick up about, I mean, I'm about limited at about 800 or 1,000 pounds. Um, but this grapple could, would be good for 2,000. All right, so it oscillates. It does not oscillate with hydraulics. You have to use momentum to make it oscillate. Okay, another cool thing about this, this grapple that they thought of is they put these rope bollards on here. Now, we keep our hoses out of the way by putting these little webbings with rings on them. Ugh. There we go. So I keep my hoses out of the way uh, from getting all tangled up with these little webbings with rings. But, but usually, if, if you wanted to, you could just take those off and you've got access to these nice rope bollards on either side. This is great for attaching a rope. And we've got a chain attachment right here to take in a nice gauge of chain if you want to pull with the chain. The other thing, this is a really, really cool feature, 
Turn that on. We've got, obviously you can see the spikes. These are, these are good dogs for helping push a tree over or when I'm tilted back in this configuration, I'm holding a big stump. I tilt it back and the stump rests in these spikes. Really helpful. Um, this right here is a trailer attachment for a little, a, a trailer hitch. And there's a little yellow elbow kind of thing that they provide with this grapple and it fits into there. And then you can have like a ball or a pinnel hitch right there so you can move your chipper around the job site you can turn a trailer around you know you can move stuff around this is so nice to be able to move equipment around a job site with the mini skid when you're in a really tight area and the trucks are just not cutting it because they're too uh they're too long they put a double chainsaw scabbard on the top of the grapple which you can use to stow your saws and drive them into a job site that's a long distance away it's a handy little feature sometimes and then we've got another set of spikes here this is a good joint for when we're doing a pushover, either pushing a tree over or um, pushing a big log into the chipper or something. So they really thought this through. I mean, this is just a fantastic grapple. And we have put this through the ringer. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and store these. You know, when we're doing this, When we're doing our, when we're playing with the grapple, we don't want it to rotate too much, okay? I have this little cutout on this side where I had the plasma cut to get a tool in. And that's one thing I would say, I wish they had come up with a better design for uh, getting to these hoses because they didn't, you know, you could get a wrench in through their logo, but it was uh, really, really hard. So I went ahead and just, I cut that open a little more. But anyways, this cut should be facing the operator. If it's not facing the operator, then your hoses are twisted. You need to let the uh, grapple untwist. And if you don't do that, you run the risk of breaking one of the hose connections. Shortly after shooting this video, I decided to paint our surface yellow on the side that's been plasma cut. So the side that should be facing the operator at all times is an obvious yellow. All right, one of the first drills that you should probably learn to do if you happen to ha be fortunate enough to have a mini skid and have this branch manager attachment, one of the first ways to familiarize yourself is to start trying to purposefully make it oscillate on the log. You have like a little practice log like this. And I'm gonna demonstrate a quick drill of how I swap sides back and forth a couple times. more forward and raise your boom up a little bit you raise your boom up to give yourself some clearance from the ground you tilt it forward to let that swivel motion uh, be in its full potential however there's other times where you might want to swing the load like a baseball bat and that's where these uh, bumper spikes these dogs are really helpful for that good way to grab a log if you want to feed it into the chipper or load it into the truck but something that you need to understand is you got to be in the dog if you're not in the dog then it just it just does that and then this big butt is smacking into your hoses or into your mini skid and you, you don't want that okay so make sure you're in the dog can we put right it back out. in the dogs what's that now let me get a better look at it in the dog. Yeah, come on around here to the front. 
I'm going to demonstrate how to get it back into the dogs. I'm just going to tilt down, back up, then tilt back up again. I'm going to snatch it and I'll have it in. Like that. There's a time to carry a log like that, but then most of the time on job sites, we're grabbing stuff that's too heavy to lift all the way up, so you need to know how to drag. So to drag, remember, we're gonna grab it in such a way that we have a good hold on it, but we're gonna deliberately tilt the attachment forward to let that swivel engage, and we're gonna lift our boom up just a little bit to give it clearance, but not so much that we're being unsafe with a much higher center of gravity. We don't want too high a center of gravity. I am gonna do this drill where I make a figure eight around the two larger cones and I'm not allowed to hit any of the smaller cones with either the skid or the log. And time will, uh, you know, you, you time yourself doing this drill. <laughs> and we're gonna practice that today. So you can see we went over the two fundamental ways of picking up a load with this grapple, okay? One is using the dogs and the other is, is dragging. The advantage to dragging is you can use that oscillation, you can really weave through tight obstacles, but then there's other times where you want to lift your load over something like a flower pot or something like that and lifting it using the dogs helping you is is a great option for that as well okay all right hope this video has been helpful